So today I want to discuss with you the five biggest mistakes that I see enterprise architectures teams make. And the first one is not understanding your stakeholders uh, and not having a good view of all of your stakeholders. You really have to consider all of them, understand what their needs are, how the architecture affects them, who benefits and who doesn't. So you really have to start with asking yourself, what is the business value we are creating here? Which of my stakeholders is benefiting from that? In, in what way? Maybe who doesn't benefit? Who has the adverse effects? Uh, you have to look at a good balance between long-term and short-term effects because that has different impacts for different kinds of stakeholders. And finally, you have to deal with conflicting interests of these stakeholders because, of course, effects of your architecture might be different for different stakeholders. So really, understanding your stakeholders is key and not paying enough attention to them. That is mistake number one. Mistake number two that I see is that architects often try to use the same communication for all these different stakeholder groups, all these different audiences. You cannot serve all these audiences with one size fits all communication. You really have to adapt your communication style, both in terms of the content, the level of detail, the things they need to know, and in terms of the communication style, the kind of formats, diagrams, etc., that you use. I see basically three main groups that I encounter in management that you have to adapt to. The first group is people with a technical background. And they can easily read diagrams or complex schemas because they're used to that from their, their background and training. So you could use your enterprise architecture diagrams with them. Maybe adapt them a bit, explain them, but that is doable. The second group I see a lot are people with a financial background. Of course, you find lots of them in management as well. So they are used to things like tables, charts, spreadsheets, etc. And you can convey your architecture in that form. Uh, it's just adapting the content, uh, displaying it, presenting it in a different format. The third group I find, find most difficult, that's people with a legal background or a background in public management. They are used to text and it is not very easy to express an architecture just in text. But you do have to provide explanations beyond just having diagrams, pictures, tables. There has to be textual content as well. So really paying attention to different types of stakeholders and using the communication style that fits best, that is the second thing you have to focus on. One size fits all communication is not the way to go. Then there's this third mistake that I see a lot, and that is missing the forest for the trees, focusing on the details and missing the important fundamentals. Uh, one way that uh, often occurs is that lots of architects are bookkeepers of the present, keeping track of the current state, spending all their effort in keeping their documents up updated uh, with the information on the current state, whereas the most value that an architect adds is in designing the future. Of course, you need to know where you're coming from. So you need to know what the current state is up to a certain level of detail. Maybe some architects find it safe to just concentrate on the, the, the presence because mistakes in the future, those are the really costly ones, de making design decisions that are really wrong. That's, of course, much more costly than forgetting something in the current state. But really giving direction to the future is essential. And architecture as a discipline is concerned with fundamental elements and properties as it's defined, for example, in this, in this ISO standard on architecture description. So what is fundamental? Well, what I would say is take a risk-driven approach to that. The things that are risky, the decisions that, that bring a lot of risk or uh, a potential, a lot of, potentially a lot of cost, those are the decisions that are fundamental. The things that are difficult to change, costly to change after you've taken the decision, that should be your focus. Um, and finally, if you look further into the future, you have less information. So the further you look, the broader the brush should be with which you paint that future. You can't add the details there because you just don't know yet. So mistake number three, missing the forest for the trees, something also uh, very often encountered in enterprise architecture. Then on to mistake number four, and that is not interacting closely enough with others. Of course, we've come a long way, but still I do encounter architects that have this ivory tower image that uh, play the role of uh, department of no or the architecture police uh, because they're too distant from their actual stakeholders and colleagues. Uh, they just review all kinds of documents, but they don't really interact closely with different disciplines in the enterprise. That close collaboration is really key, and that ranges from um, basically uh, aligning with the company's strategy to conveying the architecture vision to giving guidance to development teams, understanding technical impediments, knowing what your customers need. It's a really broad range of people you need to inter interact with, and that's, that really requires you to socialize the architecture talk about it, share it, gather feedback on it, uh, something you can't easily do with all these static documents that we used in the past. So that was mistake number four, not interacting closely enough with others, other disciplines, other people involved. 
And then finally, the fifth mistake I see a lot is not using the right tools for the job. Classical office tools, uh, primitive drawing tools, that is really not good enough nowadays. It's, it results in static documents that you can't adapt easily, that are not integrated with other data sources, that are outdated as soon as they're published because there's no automated update, that are ill-adapted to the needs of these different audiences because you can't easily generate different types of views from them. So that is really not the way to go anymore. My advice is to use a dedicated platform that allows you to do all these things. Socialize your architecture, let others interact with it at their level with their needs uh, beyond just having a bunch of static documents that are very difficult to maintain. So that is the fifth mistake, not using the right tools for the job.